Here on GTN, we like to be positive. When it comes to improving your swimming, we tend to talk about things that you can do to help that further. But today, I'm gonna to flip that on its head and I'm gonna address the common mistakes that many of you make when it comes to swimming. So first up, your head position. Now this can have a huge impact on your overall body position. If your head position is incorrect, it can make swimming so much harder. But the great thing is, even just the smallest tweak in position of your head can have a dramatic positive impact on your stroke. Now the common mistake is that people hold their head too high because it feels safe. They want to see where they're going down the pool. But due to the weight of our head, if we do hold it too high, that can cause our hips and our feet to sink. Now you may be totally unaware of the fact that you're holding your head too high, but you probably have noticed, if this is the case for yourself, the drag effect from your hips and your feet being lower in the water and almost going along in this plow effect through the water. So ideally, we want to relax the head, look down below ourselves. Now in reality, and for myself, I tend to find this as looking around two to three meters in front of me on the pool floor. Okay, now moving on to probably the most common swimming mistake, and that is the dropped elbow. What I mean by a dropped elbow is that you are simply dropping your elbow during the catch phase of the stroke. So just as the hand enters the water and we start to apply pressure and force down on the water, the elbow drops. Now this is a really hard one to self-identify and spot yourselves because it's so subtle, but it is incredibly common, as I say. In fact, most people out there probably have a dropped elbow, even a lot of high-level swimmers. So if you do have someone on pool deck, such as a coach, to spot and identify this for you, then super. Why is this a bad thing? Well, basically, by that elbow dropping, you're not able to apply as much force and pressure down on the water. And this affects the stroke in a couple of ways. One is that because you aren't applying pressure down on the water, you drop, you sink down into the water. And that therefore increases your surface area and drag through the water. The second is that it affects your momentum, the speed that you're carrying through the water. So you end up with kind of a bit of a stop-start stroke because you're not applying as much pressure and force down on the water and then you try and make up for it in the pool phase. I often liken it a bit to an overextended heel strike when you're running. That heel striking out in front of you, breaking force, slowing you down and then you've got to get that speed back up and over. So a couple of good drills to help you with this and try and get that elbow nice and high is to do the doggy paddle drill. So you're eliminating the recovery phase of the stroke and just focusing on the underwater part of the stroke. Often advised, just keep your head up for this, slow the stroke down and really focus on getting that catch, getting the elbow high and imagining putting your arm round a barrel as you're doing that catch and pull phase. The other is putting some paddles on. So really em emphasizing that catch, really trying to get that elbow high. And you can also take the strap out of the paddles. That means that you really have to get the catch quickly, get that elbow high, because otherwise the paddle will start moving around. And then we've got excessive kick. And there's kind of two aspects to this, too much kick and too large a kick. Now, unless you're a freestyle sprinter, you do not need to be kicking excessively. Otherwise, it's gonna cost you a lot of energy and oxygen, meaning it's leaving you feeling rather out of breath. Instead, the kick should really just be there to complement the arms, add balance to the stroke, as well as a little bit of additional propulsion. Now, the reason I believe a lot of people kick too much or too large, which is causing a lot of drag, is because their kick isn't as powerful or as productive as it could be. And a good tip for you is to pop some fins on. Now, fins can really help with the technique for kick, that nice fluidity, trying to kick all the way through to the ankles and the toes, getting a nice toe off. Um, also, meanwhile, stretching the ankles out a little bit, which can be a common issue for a lot of people when it comes to kicking, because their ankles are too stiff. Maybe they've come from a running background or football background and come with quite stiff ankles. So the fins can really help to just softly and gently stretch the ankles out, whilst also trying to improve that kick making their legs stronger and also getting you in time with your arms so you get that nice balance in your stroke. Now we're coming back to head position again but for a different reason because as I mentioned earlier 
Any small movement of the head can really affect our body position. Tilt our head left, we're going to turn left. Tilt it right, you're going to turn right. So when it comes to breathing, a lot of people out there lift their head right out of the water and in some cases looking right up at the ceiling or the sky. And fair enough, it's pretty natural. We want to get as much air and oxygen into us as possible and therefore you're lifting your head right out of the water and trying to do so. But actually, this can affect our stroke quite a lot because by looking right up at the sky or up at the ceiling, we can end up with our hand crossing over that center line as we were discussing before. We can end up snaking down the pool or even just our hips and our feet sinking down in the water. Instead, what you want to imagine is that your head almost follows your body. So as your shoulders and your hips rotate round, your head's more or less following that with a small additional movement for breathing. You also want to think of breathing by keeping one eye in the water and one eye out. Now I understand that that can seem quite unnerving because it seems like you're going to have your mouth in the water and a mouthful of water. How are you going to be able to breathe? But actually what happens is the top of your head remains in the water and that creates a bit of a bow wave and then that creates in turn a cavity around your face and around your mouth. So then you can actually breathe. As I say, it can seem a bit unnerving, so just build your confidence up, but by doing it, you'll find that your stroke becomes far more fluid and a lot easier. And then we have rotation. I almost labeled this under rotation, but there are some people out there that over rotate too. So first of all, I'll talk about under rotation. So with this, basically mean that you're swimming quite flat in the water and therefore pretty much just hammering the pecs and the biceps and distributing the workload across quite a small group of muscles. Whereas when we rotate, we start to use the big lat and back muscles. So it's making the stroke far more powerful and also adding a lot more stability to the stroke. But in turn, it also allows us a little bit more reach in the stroke. It makes that catch and that high elbow a lot easier. And also in turn, reduces our surface area in the water because we now pretty much just got one shoulder in the water rather than dragging both through like a plow. We also have, on the opposite end of that, people that over-rotate, so they're rolling right over, and quite often this is the people that are crossing the midline with their catch or their pull, and therefore actually losing the power and the stability of the stroke. So you want to find that middle ground where it feels stable and you feel powerful, and there's some good tips or drills to help you with this. One is starting with a torpedo drill, so whack some fins on for this, and it's a good way also to practice the kick work we were talking about before, and pop your arms by your side, kicking on your front for six kicks, then rotating to the left, back to your front, and then back to the right, and just keep doing that and practicing getting that rotation in sync with the shoulders, hips, all moving together, and then build that into the freestyle stroke. Keep the fins on so you can keep the stroke nice and easy and controlled, and just focus on getting that nice catch rotating over a nice strong stroke. Um, You've probably noticed a lot of these all link to one another. So don't worry if you think, I've got all these issues and all these mistakes going on in my stroke. Often by improving and working on one of them, you find that all the others start to fall into place. If you've got any questions though, please do drop them in the comment section down below and we'll do our best to get back to you and help you either in the comment section or in a future video. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe down below too.